people ask, where do you get your ideas? Well, right here. All this is mine. I'll never starve here. I'm Ray Bradbury. And this is... Clocks, hourglasses, barometers. Who has not lain on his back and wondered where the weather was born and how it traveled and why along the way it sometimes ate people alive? And then again, late nights, doesn't the wind outside your house scratch at your screen like a cat needing to be fed? And what then? Do you let the wind in? And what happens if you do? Susan there. Yes. Here she is. Why? Damn it. What's up? Are you all right? Are you still there? Herb? C could you come over here, please? J just for a few minutes. <laughs> Sorry. Ann and Keith are here. Bridge party. Oh, sure, sure. J just forget it. You sound lousy. Why don't you come here? Oh, no, no. I wouldn't want to bring my troubles over to your place. I might get you hurt. Hurt? Hurt! I'll call you back. I'm sorry.
anyone can hear me. a great big shuffling hound it's trying to smell me out this tape's for you Herb if you find it You know I've studied the wind, recorded its violence all of my working life. The great storm here in New Zealand in 68. Hurricane Hina in the Fijis. Right up until the most recent Gilbert in the Caribbean. Massive devastation. I've followed the weather everywhere. And now, The weather's following me. He's been studying storms and hurricanes all his life. And now he's flipped and thinks... That's that... unfair. Herb admitted. John Colt is strange. I mean, out of all the people in New Zealand, why did he have to latch on to you? It wants what's inside me, Herb. It wants my mind, my brain, my psychic force. It wants my intellect, Herb. 
Colt and I were both here for over a year. Fellow scientists. <laughs> we became very good friends. He, he's quite brilliant, you know. He's been through a lot. Yes, because he's gone looking for it. In Tibet, I climbed up into the mountains, to the Valley of the Winds, the place where the winds gather and plan their destruction. It was a vast, evil mountain, hard, bony rock, blasphemy to touch. I touched it. I climbed 7,000 feet to see what I should never have seen. It was terrifying. Not one wind, but hundreds. I hid in a cave, hearing, seeing. But I had seen too much. What is it? Herb, you really should come over. For God's sake, you sound terrible. No, no, I'm all right. The house is fine. The doors are bolted. Bolted? Against what? <laughs> you wouldn't believe. Try me. Are you playing cards with friends? Let me hear. What? 
Just hold the phone out so I can hear them. Please do it. God. There. I'll get some lemons. We're not doing so well, partner. Sorry. That's lovely. Drop everything and come over here. <laughs> Drop everything. Sure. Sure. What's the weather like over there? What's the weather like outside? There is none. It really is a beautiful night over here, John. Right. It doesn't want you, just me. Do you ever collect butterflies, Herb? No. Just like we collect things. This thing goes round the world collecting people. It's come to get me. Do you ever listen to a storm, Herb? All those funeral voices, those terrible, terrible voices crying out for themselves. Those are the voices of the people that has found and consumed. You're crazy. Yes, go ahead. Think that. Think that. Think anything you want. Just walk away. Leave the phone. So long. The second power cut in a month. Never mind. Coffee by candlelight's rather nice. <laughs> Life sure is funny. It's a lonely thing, even for married people. You can be in someone's arms and feel a million miles from them. We sit here on our self-assured butt bones, and not many miles away in his lonely house, surrounded by night and God knows what, one of the finest men who ever lived. Herb.
Alive, don't you? You want to get inside me? Make me a part of you. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Come on, Art. John? 